So I want to talk about one of the uh, most difficult challenges that almost every organization faces, and that is, how do you hire the right people? How do you make sure that when you are interviewing people and going through the uh, hiring process that you are getting the right people on board with the right skills, talents, abilities, knowledge, and everything that you need in that employee? So many companies hire someone and then relatively quickly figure out that that person isn't the right person for the job. And you go, well, how did that happen? Why weren't you able to discern that in the interview that this was the wrong person for this position? And so I want to use the ladder of commitment to show you how to interview people to make sure that you are getting the right people in the right position at the right time. The whole purpose of an interview is to discern truth. The problem with that is that the interview process itself is almost invariably a facade. And that is that when people go to an interview, they're on their best behavior. When they go to the interview, they've thought through their answers. They're prepared for the interview. They uh, are probably dressed in their best apparel and they have got a haircut and they've polished their shoes and they've put on makeup. And so what you're seeing may not necessarily be the employee that you're going to hire. And if you've ever hired somebody and they looked great in the interview and then they show up and you go, what happened to you? You know, they shaved before they went to the interview and then they come to work and they've got a beard. And all of a sudden they've changed because that person in the interview is not the same person that actually comes to work. And so the interview process is breaking through that facade and trying to discern truth, trying to discern what's really inside that individual and who they are and uh, what they are and how they operate and what their skill sets are. And so if you look at the ladder of commitment, on the very first day somebody comes to work, where would you like to be on the ladder of commitment with regard to that employee? At what level? Now, a lot of people say, I'd love them to come in committed, and we've talked about uh, how that typically doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, that would be wonderful if people would come into the job and they would actually be committed. But there is a level on this ladder where, in my opinion, you have to be with a new employee, because if you're not at that level, then you should not hire that employee. So at what level would you like to be? Now, I will tell you that a lot of people have said, I'd like at least that for them to be in the open and to break through that facade and to uh, tell me truth rather than lies and that I could actually, you know, believe what they are telling me, which is actually up here. And I will just tell you that uh, I would never, ever hire an employee if I, uh, if I wasn't already at the level of trust, respect, and confidence at the end of the, of the hiring process. You have to be at the level of trust, respect, and confidence, or don't hire them. Now, what that means is that you better be very, very good in the interviewing process because you need to do those things that will get you to the level of trust, respect, and confidence, and also in your uh, probationary process to get to the level of trust, respect, and, and confidence. Now, you will recall that there are only two ways in which to develop trust, respect, and confidence, and that is to get results and the other is when you hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions. So the purpose of an interview is to see whether people can get results and to listen to how they think, reason, and come to conclusions to see if there is a fit in the way in which the organization thinks, reasons, and comes to conclusions. And that ought to tell you something in the interview process is who should be doing most of the talking during the interview? The interviewee, and yet in so many organizations, the interviewer spends a whole lot of time talking about the company and talking about the job and talking about uh, this and that and, and uh, just spending a lot of time talking and very little time listening when it should be the reverse of that in an interview. The interviewer should be listening to the interviewee and the interviewee ought to be do doing most of the talking so that you can hear how they think and how they reason and how they come to conclusions. And so I want to show you the process of interviewing people using the ladder of commitment so that you can actually focus on the things that matter most in the interview. That ought to tell you something too. So what do you focus on in the interview? You focus on the things that matter most. So let's talk about that interview process. How do you know whether somebody uh, can get results or not? They haven't ever worked at your company before, so how do you know whether they can get results? Well, you look at their resume. 
And so most interviewers spend a lot of time on this. They read over the person's uh, resume and they say, hmm, I wonder if this person will be a good employee here. So in the interview, they go over the resume and they talk about the things that are in the resume. Now, did, does this resume develop trust, respect, and confidence? The answer is no. You know why? Is it possible that people lie on their resume? Is it possible that people exaggerate their position, exaggerate their title or their education or their experience? Is it possible that they exaggerate that on their resume? Well, if it's true that people lie on their resume, then you cannot trust this. So why are you spending so much time talking about the person's resume? And so what does the resume get you? It doesn't get you trust, respect, and confidence. What does it get the person? It gets them the interview. And then what does the interview get them? Well, hopefully the interview gets them the job, but the way in which it gets them the job is to develop trust, respect, and confidence. So in the interview, I will just tell you that this is how I, what I do with the resume. I tell the person that, you know, I read your resume. I know what's in it. And so thank you very much for sending it. And now let's not talk about your resume anymore because I'm not interested in what you did in the past. I'm interested in what you can do in the future for us. So don't talk to me about your past companies. Don't talk to me about your past experience. I want to talk about the future and what you can do for us. Now that changes the focus of an interview significantly from looking at a resume and looking at the past to looking at this job and looking at the future. And then what you do is you want to hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions about the future. Now this process works great for supervisors, managers, uh, directors, vice presidents, executives, uh, for people who are in pretty significant positions, in key positions in IT or in whatever it may be. It wouldn't necessarily work for a frontline lowest level employee because what you really want to do is you want to hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions. Now, it might work for frontline employees, and you just have to think through the positions that you are interviewing people for in, the, in your company so that uh, you know how to use this process. But here's what you focus on instead. Instead of focusing on the resume, you ask seven questions. Seven key questions that will help you to focus on the things that matter most. Now, if you've already picked up on the language of the ladder of commitment, every time I talk about the seven things that matter most, you know that I am talking about these seven things. And therefore, if you're going to ask seven questions, what do you ask the seven questions about? You ask the seven questions about the seven things that matter most. And they aren't closed-end questions. They aren't telling somebody something. They are open-end questions. And the very first question that you ask is, so this person's coming in to whatever position they're coming in. So let's just say that this person's coming in as the manager of the accounting department. All right. And so you would say to them, so... You are applying for the position of the manager of the accounting department. I know that you've had experience in accounting before, in managing accounting departments in the past. And so I'm just curious, as you think about our company and you think about our business, what would you see the business imperatives to be? What would you see to be imperative that you do in the accounting department? And then you just listen. You listen to see if they think like you, reason like you, and come to conclusions like you or your company. Now, I'm going to reverse this just to show it to you to show how so many companies do it. And they'll say, so I just want to share with you that we are a, a company that really believes in customer service. Customer service is one of our bus business imperatives. And so tell me, uh, is customer service something that uh, you, you believe in? Is that uh, a key part of who you are? They go, and what do they do in the interview? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, customer service. I'm, I'm really, I'm into customer service. And they say, you know, we, we, uh, we work in teams around here. And so, you know, are you able to work in teams? Are you a good team player? It's like, 
I'm not stupid. What am I going to say in the interview? Oh, I'm, I'm a great team player. I get along with everybody. Everybody gets along great with me. And that's the problem that happens in interviews is that a lot of people, if they're astute in the interview, all they have to do is uh, repeat back what it is that the interviewer is saying to them and, uh, and they'll get the job because it looks like they're in alignment. So you don't want to disclose a lot of things in the interview. What you hope is that the interviewee was smart enough to look up the company, to look at the website of the company or the, or the annual report of the company and to start to pick up on what are the key aspects and key elements of this business. And they should be able to pick up that customer service is important, that quality is important, that teamwork is important, that you know, marketing is important or whatever it is. And so that's why you ask the open-ended questions. And the first question that you ask of them is, if you were to come into this position and you got this position, what would be the most important things that you could accomplish? What would be the imperatives that you'd want to do? And if the accountant says, well, I think it's really imperative that, you know, that our, our financial reports, our accounting is accurate. I think that it's really important that we get the reports out uh, quickly and on time. I think that it's really important that we give managers the financial information that they need in, in order to make uh, sound business decisions. And so that's my role in finance and accounting is to provide managers with the and the executives with the information that they need to make solid decisions. And so I would want to make sure that all of our reports are accurate, that they're easy to use, and that uh, people can understand the, the numbers. And you go, wow, I like the way you think. And now you're on the path and you're starting to move up with regard to trust, respect, and confidence. And so this one's really, really important. This first question is because you want to see whether they're aligned. The next thing that you would ask them is, uh, and so, so what would you want to accomplish in this role? What would your goals be if you were to come into this position? What would your goals be? What, what direction would you like to take the accounting and finance department in? And you just listen. You listen to their answer. And one would hope that uh, they have thought that through, that they haven't come to this interview just as a dud. And now they may go back to their resume, right? They may think about experiences that they've had. And what you hope is that they can extrapolate from their past experience and say, well, in the past, what I thought was really important and where I focused on was this. And they can bring that up, but you don't want to take them there. And then what you need to do is to jump from the past to the future and say, so is that something that you would want to do here? And they go, yeah, I think that that's, that's pretty important. And then you can see whether that's in alignment or not with the values and philosophies and vision and mission and direction of the company and see whether they are in alignment. Then you go to roles. So what would you see your role as, as the uh, manager over the accounting and finance department? What would you see your role as? What would you see my role as if, if this was the boss interviewing them? What would my role be in, in supporting you and helping you? And again, you're listening for the answers to see how they think, reason, and come to conclusions. And then what would the expectations be? What would you expect from your people what should your people expect from you? What would you expect from me as your manager? What should I expect from you as, uh, as the manager of the accounting and finance department? And let's, uh, let's just talk about expectations so that we're very clear on uh, if we move forward on what we would be expecting from each other. And so then you go to, to boundaries and authority, and that is that, uh, so let's talk about uh, what, what boundaries would you put in place? And they go, you know, I don't need any boundaries. You know, I know exactly what, I, I've been doing this now for 40 years. I've been, you know, the financial accounting manager of companies for a long time, and I know exactly what I can and cannot do. You don't need to tell me anything. I don't need any boundaries. You can just, I'll hit the ground running. And you go, I, I don't know whether I like that or not, because... You may be good at the, at the other places that you've worked at, but you don't know this company. You don't know what our hot buttons are. You don't know uh, our executives. You don't know the challenges that we face. And so you think that you should have all authority to make decisions or, and no boundaries whatsoever. <clears throat> I'm not so sure I agree with that. And then finally, the last one is feedback. This one never gets asked in an interview or seldom gets asked. I, I'll just tell you, I've never heard it. So if it ever gets asked, I, I don't know that. And that is, I want to know up front whether this person is going to be receptive to feedback or not. When it comes to giving feedback, what type of feedback would you like? 
because a lot of times what happens is people come into an organization and then they get violated in the feedback because you know they were expecting their boss to say nothing but praise and they don't get any praise when they're a brand new employee and so they become disheartened or the reverse of that and that is that some people get irritated by getting a lot of praise you know just let me do my job you know you don't have to praise me for every little thing that I'm doing here just because I'm new on the job you know and so Let's, let's establish it in the interview of how would you like to get feedback. And so the key to interviewing people is asking the right questions. And that is drawing out because you want to hear how people think, reason, and come to conclusions. Now, what you also want to do is you want to get them to start producing very, very quickly. And so one of the things that I try to help people to understand is that the hiring process does not end on the day that the person comes to work, the first day that the person comes to work. That is not the end of the hiring process. The hiring process, particularly if a company has a probationary period, the hiring process is that entire probationary period. Because at the end of that probationary period, so let's just assume that it's 90 days, at the end of that probationary period, on the 89th day, is when you actually make a decision to hire. Because after the 89th day, on the 90th day, then, of course, you have to go through your phased process, you know, verbal warning, written warning, suspension, termination, in order to uh, get rid of them. But prior to day 90, so on day 89, in most uh, businesses and in most states in the United States and perhaps in other countries, you can let that person go without having to go through your phase process. And so people need to realize that you are making hiring decisions all throughout the probationary period. And so that's why I really encourage 30-day, 60-day, and 89th-day evaluations during the probationary period so that you can make a decision at 30 days, you can make a decision at 60 days, you can make a decision at 89 days. And so what are you going to do during the probationary period? You're going to get them to work. Get to work. And let's see if you can produce, because I know how you think and how you reason and come to conclusions. And all the time that we're working together during these 90 days, I'm going to be continuing to listen to how you think, reason, and come to conclusions. But I'm also going to be seeing whether you can actually do what you said that you're going to do. So if you're the accounting and finance manager, I want to, I want to get you doing some accounting and doing some finance work. I want to see your work. I want to see the results. And you said you're going to put together uh, reports that our people could use, financial reports that they could use that are easy to understand. So let me see some of that. Let me see some of your work so that the manager can make an informed decision all throughout that probationary period. So again, in the interview process, the interview process is designed to, uh, the hiring process and the interview in particular, is designed to help get to this level of trust, respect, and confidence. Now, remember this is a continuum, so you may only be right here as opposed to right there, but what you hope is that you are at a level of trust, respect, and confidence, and I, I will just say it very strongly, if there is any sense in here whatsoever in a hiring manager's view of whether or not they can trust this person, respect this person, and have confidence in this person after the hiring process up through, up through the end of the probationary period, if there's any concern about that whatsoever, they should not hire this individual. It will come back to haunt them. So the hiring process and the interview in, in particular focuses on the future instead of the past. It is listening instead of talking, and it is asking about the seven things that matter most.